You're listening to KEXP, where the music matters. You can find us at 90.3 FM in Seattle, streaming worldwide at KEXP.org. Thanks to all of our wonderful listeners who make this a listener-powered station and help us make these wonderful sessions possible. You can find out more about us at KEXP.org. If you've been listening a while, then you know how much we love this artist who's joining us in studio today. It's Kevin Morby. Welcome. Thank you. Hi, Cheryl. We are so excited to be in a room together. Yes. We have so much we want to talk about. Yes. But you're going to play music first. But first, the songs. All right. Thank you for bringing this fabulous band here with you today. You've got so many players with you, I actually can't even count that high. It's an infinite amount. <laughs> it's amazing. And you are here in the studios with Kevin Morby. Take it away, live on KEXB. Here we go. This song's called This is a Photograph. This is a photograph, a window to the past of your father on the front line with no shirt on, ready to take the world on beneath the West Texas sun, the year that you were born, the year that you are now. His wife behind the camera His daughter and his baby boy Got a glimmer in his eye Seem to say, this is what I'll miss about being alive And this is what I'll miss after I die My body My girls My boy Now times the undefeated The heavyweight champ Laughing in his face As he danced like Sugar Ray Used to be, come on, come on But now, no miles, no miles Used to be, come on, come on But now, no miles, no miles This is a photograph, a window to the past of your mother in a skirt in the cool Kentucky dirt, laughing in the garden, back where it all started, with a smile on her face, everything in its place. Got a glimmer in her eye She can say, this is what I'll miss about being alive This is what I'll miss about being alive This is what I'll miss about being alive This is what I'll miss after I die This is what I'll miss about being alive This is what I'll miss about being alive This is what I'll miss about being alive This is what I'll miss after I die This is what I'll miss about being alive This is what I'll miss about being alive This is what I'll miss about being alive This is what I'll miss after I die This is a photograph Me on a front line, ready to take the world on. Through the Tennessee sand, the inside that kingdom. Got a glint in my eye. See the Kevin Morby live on KEXP. Okay, this next song is called Rock Bottom. Gonna laugh at you, all gonna laugh at you, they're all gonna laugh at you, 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 all of my life. Just trying to be 
like my father All of my life Up to the teat of my mama It's cold down here, it's cold down here Rock bottom, bop bop Rock bottom, bop bop All of my life Just trying to make a dollar Open up your mouth, my boy All you gotta do is holler Hey, in the rock bottom Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Listening to Kevin Morby live on KEXP songs from the album This Is a Photograph. How is that only six months old? I feel I like know. I've been listening to it for six <laughs> years. Me too. Me too. <laughs> you have. Um, this next song is called Bittersweet Tennessee. You got sick The living took forever But the dying went quick And all just to think you were a little kid Wondering what you'd be When you got big And there was no time Suddenly, oh, there was no time Suddenly there was no time Suddenly, oh, there was no time We'll have one on me, bittersweet 
Tennessee Bittersweet Tennessee beautiful. We're here in the KEXP studios with Kevin Morby performing songs from This Is a Photograph. This next song, putting down the guitar and going to sing a song called Five Easy Pieces. Yeah, 
hands on my jeans A song in my mouth that you won't ever let me sing All of my time has been wasted on you, baby There's tears of my life fell like ice from my eyes And I can't complain, love's insane, I don't blame you Low hanging fruit, I pull down the tree. Say this way, pick me. Now I hang around just like a clown, wondering what to do with a man, wondering which road leads back to you. Let's give ourselves a hand. <laughs> we got a big crowd here. Kevin Morby live here in the KEXP studios. Songs from the beautiful new album, This Is a Photograph and Five Easy Pieces. I love that song. Thank you. The part of Karen Black played by Kevin Morby. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I love it. Well, I said that it feels like this album has been out six years and it's because I have listened to it six years worth of listening. It is just so amazing. So much great instrumentation on the record. And I guess you didn't have to make any hard choices about which instruments to bring on tour. You just, I just <laughs> brought them all. Brought them all. I just brought them all. Luckily, they all came with me. Oh, you sound great. I've been seeing little snippets on people's social media uh, of the concerts and have been just dying for you to make it to Seattle. You've been on tour for a while. Forever. We've been on tour for forever. Si we're going on week seven right now wow. in, as a part of a larger year. But this is, this is the longest stint I've ever done. That's like, you know, one beginning, one end, seven weeks, seven weeks and change. You talked the other day on social media about having seen three seasons now yes. on tour. That's a, yeah. that's a while. We started out and it was like 102 degrees or something in Southern California. And then we made our way through the beautiful autumn of North America. And then we hit the winter. And then now it's kind of autumn again, I guess. Well, it's nice, I guess, to be out with all these people after a long period of time where we were in somewhat in isolation. You had Katie, of course, yeah. with you, which was great. But I think that... Um, this album just has so much celebratory energy in it. And, you know, it came initially from a place for you, which was scary. Um, yeah. You want to talk a little bit about the journey of the record? Sure, yeah. You know, the, um, the kind of first seed of this record was an incident in which my father passed out at a family dinner that I was at. And he luckily was totally fine, and my dad is doing well. Um, People always ask me how he's doing after I tell this story, but nothing too, too, too crazy happened, but he's doing good. Um, but he was rushed to the hospital and it was this sort of scary thing where he had gone lifeless kind of at this family dinner all of a sudden. And serendipitously that night when he was released from the hospital, um, my mom sort of unearthed this old box of family photographs and I was going through them and I was really struck by this one in particular that was of my father as a younger man. And I kind of did the math and it turned out he would have been 32 years old in this photograph and I would have just been born. The photo was taken in Lubbock, Texas. And actually, here, it's, it's right here. 
on the back of your jacket. Yeah. I do want to ask about that jacket. Finish your story. Well, so my um, um, everything that I'm going to say today is just resembled in this jacket. Um, so you just turn the volume down. Um, yeah, unfortunately, our listeners can't see it. Yes, yes. Oh, right, of course. Sorry. Okay, the listeners out there. So my father had passed out, and uh, uh, later my mom unearthed this box of family photographs, and there's this one of him, and I did the math, and he would have been 32 years old in the photo. I would have just been born when the photograph was taken. It was taken in Lubbock, Texas. And when I was sitting there holding that photograph, I was 32 at the time. So it just felt like this weirdly um, bizarre and sort of serendipitous and magical evening where I felt this conversation was sort of happening between this photograph and this thing that had just happened, this medical sort of emergency that had just happened to my father. When they took him away to the, the, the hospital in the ambulance, they had taken his shirt off and he was also shirtless in this photo. And yeah, it just, it, it, it sort of began this fascination with old family photographs. And then shortly thereafter, that was at the beginning of 2020, we went into lockdown and everything. And I found that I was really sort of taking comfort in the past in these sort of old family heirlooms and photographs. And um, later I ended up going to Memphis to, to work on this record because I think Memphis is also a place that does a really great job at memorializing its past. Um, but yeah, so that's that's basically how the record got started. And the phrase, this is a photograph, popped into my brain. And I, I later wrote that song during the lockdown. You have brought cities in as characters in your records many times in the past. The places that you've lived, though, New York, L.A., Kansas City. And you talk about wanting to go to Memphis as a place that has a deep history in the past. But that's not a place that you had lived. Talk about your time there. How long were you there? And and what was your experience like? You stayed in this grand hotel, which I'd love for you to paint a picture of for us. Sure, yeah, I stayed at the Peabody, the legendary Peabody Hotel in downtown Memphis, um, which I had become familiar with because my girlfriend, Katie Crutchfield, um, had taken me there. She grew up in the South. She grew up in Birmingham, Alabama, and they would go, they would frequent uh, this hotel on family vacations. And one time we were going to visit her parents, and on the way back, we ended up staying at that hotel. And just like anything that sort of comes into your life where suddenly you have this obsession or this fascination with a certain place or thing, Memphis became that for me. You know, I went there and I stayed in this hotel on this trip with Katie. And it kind of dawned on me that though I'm a musician, I hadn't really spent too much time in this place that has such a musical history. And I kind of got in my mind that I wanted to go back. So I had my booking agent book me a show there. And I played this wonderful show at this place called the Crosstown Concourse. Shout out to, to Crosstown. And... Um, yeah, I just had this great moment there. And then Katie and I just kept taking vacations there. And then so when the lockdown hit, it just kind of, you know, it was, there was no question about it. I knew that it's where I wanted to go to work and I wanted to go to the Peabody Hotel. And it ended up, I kind of describe it as kind of like when Kevin McAllister in Home Alone 2 goes to the Plaza Hotel in New York. And he's sort of, you know, he's there and he's in this big grand room. I checked in for about three weeks and they upgraded me to a suite. The hotel was all but empty because of the virus. There were some people, but nothing like it usually is. So it's kind of like I had the run of this place. Um, were the ducks there? The ducks were there, and the duck master was there, and they were doing the whole duck procession in the evening and night, or the every morning and evening. And um, so I had this great time, but a lot of my time was spent outside of the of the hotel, and I just kind of returned there at night and kind of take things that I'd collected from around the city. And, you know, I wasn't hanging out with any other people or going to any, you know, most places were closed down, so I wasn't going to, you know, restaurants or bars, anything like that. It was... I was sort of following the lineage of different stories that I found interesting, most notably the story of Jeff Buckley as an example of, you know, I was just sort of following these breadcrumb trails of people who had spent their life and time in, in, in Memphis. And I sort of back to the family photograph thing, I think that there was something so comforting about the past. And though no point in history is without its great complications, but you know, there wasn't COVID um, in those times. So there was a sort of thread there that I could kind of disappear into pretending I was in the past or something um, where there was no COVID. I know that Jeff Buckley was sort of a recent discovery for you. He's someone that I have loved for so, so long. But I was delighted that through your journey of learning more about him that I learned some things I didn't know. A Coat oh, cool. of Butterflies is such a beautiful song. And I didn't know that story of him. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's such a fascinating story. And I think you know, of all the stories there, he's the only person who's not, at least from the South, or he's not a Memphian, you know, he's not from Memphis, like most other people, uh, other, the other stories that I was exploring, those people are. And he was an outsider, you know, he grew up in California, and then he lived in New York and kind of cut his teeth in New York. And then I feel like, and I especially felt like I was sort of chasing something similar to what I imagined he was. And it led both of us to Memphis and, you know, 
part of what led me to Memphis was his story, but it was, um, yeah, I just felt a sort of, um, I, I felt a connection there with him uh, being an outsider and sort of chasing something back to, you know, uh, the root of American culture. You worked with your good friend Sam Cohen on mm -hmm. this record, and I know that you two have so much trust together. And I read where you talked about just letting loose and singing the songs and shouting and feeling comfortable in a way with him that you didn't wouldn't have maybe felt with other people. What do you think that the magic is that brings what you do together out? I think, you know, number one, we've worked together so much, so we have, you know, that comfortability there. Um, but also, even from the first record we did, Singing Saw, it's just that thing when you make an immediate sort of best friend or collaborator where you just feel like you share a brain and you feel like you're after the same goal and you both see it down, you know, down the road or in the distance and you both, it takes both of you to get to it. And I really love working with Sam and kind of what you are saying earlier about bringing, you know, such a big band with me, there was definitely an element of okay, the world's sort of opening back up to 2021 and there's the vaccine and things like that and things are slowly opening. And we'd all been in lockdown for so long, it did feel like we wanted to sort of create this party and invite as many people in as possible. So that was certainly fun. But also a sort of, you know, I remember telling Sam, like, I want to shout on this record. I want to be yelling on this record and kind of create an album that when we take it live, it can be a big party and can be really fun. And how has it felt to be shouting every night and, and being in that party now? It has felt great. It has felt, it, it's been amazing. Well, thanks for bringing the party here to yes, KEXP. Absolutely. I want to tell you, Cheryl, uh, this is the thing that I was saving from telling you earlier, but I, um, I did the math and 10 years ago would have been my first KXP this month. Oh, so I our 10 year that. reunion, our 10 year anniversary. Yeah. All right. You have to draw a picture of that coat for our listeners who can't see you now, but who will eventually watch the video. I know I, I'm, I'm happy. Tell the story of that beautiful coat. Well, my girlfriend got me this. We just played at Webster Hall in New York and she'd been telling me all to her. I have a gift coming for you at some point. And then um, this showed up and it's great. And it's just sort of a memento of all things having to do with my record. So there's a bunch of different motifs and imagery on it. There's my truck. That's my truck. There's Big Elvis. blue truck. Elvis is on there. The Peabody Hotel is on there. Jeff Buckley's house is on the back. My father, my shirtless 32-year-old father is on the back. <laughs> so, um, Big Jim. Um, there's some flamingos from the Memphis Zoo. And then there's a bunch of little lyrical uh, embroidery. So, really, really cool. Yeah, that Thank sounds you, wild if you're not looking at it, but it's awesome. So, yeah. make sure you watch the video of this session when it launches. Kevin and all of you, thank you so much for coming by. Thanks so much for having us. It's such a pleasure, always. Always a treat for us. We've been looking to forward to this for so long, and already I can't wait for the next visit. Yeah, same. <laughs> You've got it tuned to KEXP, where the music matters. Thank you once again to all the listeners who power the station and keep great music like this on the airwaves and online for all of us to enjoy. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and get notification every time a wonderful new video launches. And thanks to everyone who supports this listener-powered station. You can find out more about us or make a gift at kexp.org. Once again, a big thanks to Kevin Morby live on KEXP Seattle. Thank you. No, don't go. Are we done? It's off? Off air? Yay. Woo, that was great. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.